Hi, welcome to another set of Holistic 3D tutorials. In this tutorial set, I'm going to teach you about oak trees and we're going to create an oak tree in Unity. You can see the oak tree here on the screen. So I've just released a new course at this point, actually today, uh, all about pathfinding through oak trees and dividing space up. This is, I guess, the start of that course. If you'd like to learn about oak trees and pathfinding in 3D space, then grab this hold of this coupon code, which will allow you to get 75% off that course on h3dlearn.com. Also, any code and resources created in this tutorial will be available for my Patreon subscribers, which you can also find here if you'd like to support my work here on YouTube. Okay, so let's get started. What is an oak tree? Well, an oak tree is basically a recursive algorithm for dividing up space into eights, which is why it's called an oak tree, obviously. So you can see that I've already divided up this space here in Unity. And what it's doing is it's actually searching through the 3D space and looking for any particular geometry that might be in there. In this case, it's looking for things with colliders on them. And then what it does is it actually, I guess, looks for the detail in this world by creating smaller and smaller little voxels around where the detail is. So what you end up with is basically a series of nodes that will define the space and well, in this case, tell you what's empty space and what's not. So, for example, this big cube this down the bottom here obviously is empty space. So if you're using that for like a pathfinding algorithm, then you know that you're quite free to go around within here and not hit anything. So what it does is it just keeps dividing up cubes into cubes into cubes until it actually hits a object and then... Um, defines it by these small little cubes that sit around it. Okay, so let's get started creating this. Okay, if you would like to follow along, then I'm using Unity 2021.3, though the code in this is not specific to this version and will work in older versions of Unity. And I am pretty confident it will continue to work in later versions of Unity as well because with most of the stuff we're actually doing is our own logic in uh, C sharp we are using the bounds part of the unity API as you'll see in a moment which hasn't changed for a very long time and I don't think it will so we should be pretty safe okay so we've got an empty project here we need to create three scripts so down in your assets you want to right click create C sharp script we're going to call this create oak tree that's one the next one we create will be called oak tree and then the next one we will create will be called oak tree node okay so oak tree node like that so an oak tree is a graph structure and it's a tree like structure now it's tree-like because if you have a look at it if you were to draw a diagram it looks like an upside down tree so you have a parent node which then splits into eight children so they're the sort of the branches and then each of those children are split into eight and those are split into eight now eventually you stop splitting at either a minimum size or when you've actually found something of interest in the space that you're dividing up which is what we're doing now okay so let's start by going into our octree node code and it's not going to be a mono behavior so we can get rid of that and we can get rid of our functions that are already sitting in there that unity gave us okay so what we need to do to define a node is that it has a bounds which is its box that's sitting around it basically so we create a bounds and we'll call it node bounds okay we then want to create a minimum size so float min size like that okay so let's create a constructor for this public octree node and bounds b float min node 
size and then we'll go node bounds equals B and min size equals minimum node size okay so that's all we need for now what I'm going to get you to do throughout this too is to actually draw what's going on in our scene view using gizmos uh, the reason being is that well essentially you don't see the oak tree it's uh, just dividing up space but you need something to be able to debug what you're doing and see the effects so it's really important that we put this in so create a public void and we'll call it draw and then inside of here we'll put gizmo dot color equals new color and I'm making this green so 0 1 0 and we're going to go gizmo dot draw wire cube the size of the bounds so node bounds dot center which is the position of the box and then node bounds dot size okay so just save that now you want to go into your octree code so open that up and again this won't be a mono behavior so we can get rid of that and those methods in there okay so the octree starts with the root node so we create a public octree node root node like that okay then we want a constructor so public octree and we're going to pass through an array of game objects that we will use to size our octree so world objects and we'll also bring through the minimum node size as well so that we can pass that on okay so then in here we will create a bounds so we're going to go bounds bounds equals new bounds now the bounds is an axis axis aligned sorry bounding box which means that it creates basically a box which covers the extent of the game object but the box is axis aligned so it's sitting along the world axis the ed x y and z so it actually is um, perfectly aligned to that it's not a skewed or anything even if you rotate your object you still get a axis aligned bounding box which is why it's called that and you may have seen the abbreviation AABB with respect to collisions and bounds and those sorts of things so uh, that's what that is and if you're interested in about the bounds you could look it up in the unity API but in this uh, tutorial probably get a fair bit of understanding of what it's actually doing so for each game object go in world objects so we'll actually loop through all those world objects now and make our bounds bigger based on those objects so it's actually quite easy with the unity API so bounds dot encapsulate it's called and we send it our get component our collider that's sitting on our object so get component collider dot bounds and essentially that just makes the bounding box bigger to encompass everything that we've sent it into that uh, world objects array okay so once we've done that what I want to do is then force it into a cube shape okay so we want float max size equals mathf dot max and we're finding the max between the X Y and Z dimensions of that bounding box and then picking the one that is the biggest so that we can set that to the size of our cube okay so new float in here and then bounds dot size dot x bounds dot size dot y and bounds dot size dot z and then with that we'll go vector 3 size vector equals new vector 3 and set each dimension to max size max size max size and max size okay then we set our bounds 
to those values. So bounds.set min max it's called, bounds.center minus size vector, and then bounds.center plus size vector. And finally, we can create our root node with that value. So root node equals new octree node bounds min node size and we just save that now we can go to our create tree and this is a mono behavior it's going to be on an object inside of the hierarchy so let's create at the top here a public game object array of world objects then we want a public int for node min size let's set that to five to begin with and then we'll have our octree okay so in start we can go octree or otree equals new octree pass through the world objects and the node min size and finally we don't need an update but we're going to just add in a void on draw gizmos so we can see what's happening so if application dot is playing then we will call otree dot root node dot draw okay we're ready to test something at this point so save that let's go into unity and in your hierarchy we're going to right click and add in an empty object and we can call this our um, octree we want to add create octree onto it now you, this is where you can change your node min size if you want it to be smaller or, or bigger and the world objects we now need to create some world objects so just go 3d object and add a few cubes so if i add that cube and then just control d and duplicate a few of them and just move them around and you might want to hit R and just give them some different sizes just like this okay and then you want to select your octree so we've got one two three four five cubes if I just lock that code there I can shift select all my cubes and drag them on top of world objects to automatically put them in there and then remember to unlock that which is something I do quite often and get completely lost okay so now we can press play and we will see our node displayed on the screen so this is a root node and you can see that it's around all of the objects in the scene but it looks bigger than it needs to be okay it should be hugging the edge not that you necessarily want it to be hugging the edge but when you create this you actually need to get the sizes now because the sizes of the cubes actually measured from the center then we need to multiply it by 0.5 to actually halve the size because we only want half the size in each direction so just quickly going back into our octree code with this size vector down here that we're creating if we multiply this by 0.5 f it will actually then give you what i've been calling in this course that i've created the radius of the cube because i can't remember what you call half a cube anyway this is from the center out to the edge you know what i mean and now we've set that so just save that let's come back in here and we will press play and Bam, there we go okay so see how it's hugging the edge of the extents of where it needs so in this case it's going out and pushing it out between these two cubes now because this distance is wider than anything else it's going to push out your cube into that biggest volume that it had set there okay right i'm going to leave this video here now that we have something that we can work with when we come back in part two of this tutorial we'll start dividing this up into eight if you'd like to support our work like us on youtube visit our website holistic3d.com look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on patreon